The SCA definition of specialty coffee requires that its attributes result in significant extra value in the marketplace. But how do we recognize this value? And how do market actors decide how to value a coffee they wish to buy or sell? It's important to note here that we're using value in the economic sense. Because this is a tool intended to be used in the coffee marketplace, it is based on a foundation of assessing economic value. However, we know that there are other non-economic ways that coffee is valued. For example, coffee drinking can be an aesthetically moving experience and can reflect artisanship and the beauty of nature. This beauty may inform economic value, but it does not need to be seen in economic terms. In a similar way, coffee requires human effort, which is its own inherent value. All humans deserve dignity and respect, and their work should be valued as such. Again, this might be re reflected in the economic value of a coffee, but it can also be valued in a social or an ethical way. So let's talk about how value is related to the attributes we explored in the previous video. To begin with, we must recognize that different individuals, whether coffee producers, tasters, or consumers, will value different attributes differently. Individuals have different needs and expectations, especially in their food and their drink. The economic value of a product is based on the subjective preferences of buyers and sellers. This concept that there are diverse ways to value something is known by economists as the subjective theory of value. This is the dominant theory of value in modern economics because it explains how goods and services are valued differently across individuals and cultures. It's important to note, value is not the same as price. The two are related, but what we're talking about here is the value that people ascribe to a coffee. So to bring it back to attributes, if we can document the attributes of a coffee, we can begin to understand whether people like them or not, which can help us understand people's preferences. And since preferences lead to value, we can then understand how a coffee is valued by market actors. This is really important information particularly to coffee sellers. By understanding market preferences, they can effectively target the market segments likely to value their product most highly. So understanding attributes is key to understanding the value of a coffee. Since these attributes differ, we can take another step in organizing them. Some attributes are intrinsic to the coffee and are a part of their material reality. This would include the flavor of the coffee due to its chemical makeup, its physical properties, grade, etc. But also important are the extrinsic attributes, which are usually information about the coffee, things like its country of origin, brand, or a sustainability certification. Both categories of attribute are important, and both add value to the coffee. And, in fact, as distinctive positive attributes accumulate, the coffee can be seen as getting more and more special. So when measuring coffee attributes, there are three tools we can use to measure a coffee's intrinsic attributes. A physical assessment, where we evaluate coffee's physical properties. A sensory descriptive assessment, which measures coffee's sensory attributes in a descriptive way. And an effective assessment, which measures the cupper's impression of a coffee's quality based on its intrinsic attributes. A major innovation in the coffee value assessment is the addition of a tool to measure extrinsic attributes, which we know also contribute to a coffee's value. These four tools used together can provide a complete picture of a coffee's attributes and can give us the best possible chance of assessing a coffee's value completely.